run a small press in Scotland. It's called the Shed Press, and it actually is in a shed, so I, I, this, it was built specially. And I make books and cards, and sometimes work with other artists, and just yeah, play about and have, have fun. <laughs> so this was the, the pamphlet that won the uh, Cal MacDonald, and it's called Mackin Wires, and that means it's a Shetland word for knitting needles. And so if you don't know if anybody you may all know about the Shetland Islands, but they're about as far north as you can go in Scotland. And they're actually near Norway, and used to belong to Norway, but um, so they, they, they have some of the, Nor the Norwegian language, so a lot of the words are, are quite different than Scottish. So there's a few of them in here, but... Uh, um, and what, really what it's about is it's mainly about um, knitting, but it's also about the people, and some of them are my family, so, and, uh, and sheep. They, they play a big part. So. Without them, they would have no industry up there, so that's, that's their business. Um, okay, so the kind of the knitting, there's two main kinds. There's, this is the kind of lace knitting, you see it on the, on the book. And they have that for baby shawls and all that sort of thing. And, some, and people used to just wear them like day to day, but they'd be thicker wool. And the other kind of knitting, which some of you might have seen, is the fair isle, fair isle knitting. It's the kind of patterns that are Kind of multicolored sort of lots of yeah lots of patterns one after the other and, and these are sort of be natural dyes or they'll be there was kind of imported dyes like madder and indigo and, and the sheep themselves are, they come in eleven different colours sort of browns and blacks and greys so you can maybe knit something up like this so um, I'm hoping to do so at some point but uh, yeah, so the first one is called lessons and it is about the about actually how to knit fair isle. And they actually they use these four or five double pointed needles. And it looks really complicated. They do it in a round, so you get this tube with no seams. And it looks really complicated, but it's actually not that bad. It's not, it's not as bad as it looks. And I think for some words, like PD means small. So I mentioned that. So that's so the, the PDs are like the small, small bands. I think we'll be okay. No. <laughs> okay, lessons one. Knitting in the round, work two colours at a time. See your seamless work go easily in your hands in a space enclosing way. Two, consider balance, recognise relationships. The charm of Fair Isle lies in choosing the palette, is fraught with indecision. Three, Cool colours recede. Warm ones require management. For the centre row, enliven or harmonise. With a touch, the pattern sings. Build with, uh, we'll build with pattern bands, this is four, sorry, build with pattern bands of PDs and bright borders. Keep symmetrical. Design with odd number rows. Find joy in geometry. Five. Snowflakes or diamonds mixed with arrowheads and stars. For a change of pace, try small all over seeding. Discover hidden delights. Six. Uneven this goes after washing and blocking. Colours are muted in a light halo of fibres. The garment softens and blooms. So that's it. Um, I need a drink of water. Next one is actually about my own relationship to knitting. It's all my family knit, and, and I do off and on, um, but it's a, it's a funny relationship. Uh, so this one is called sock, and sock is the Shetland word for knitting, and it's also obviously a sock as well, but it's, it's actually what they call knitting. And there's a couple of words, I think, I don't know if you know about spindle side, is the female side of the family. I get as opposed to spear side, which is the, the male side. I think we're okay. Okay, sock. It has always been an on off affair. I studied chemistry, the wrong subject, or so I thought. It kept me from you. I was attracted to its honesty, its logical nature, the getting right back to elements like choosing yarn, 
then finding out what could be done. There were tried and tested procedures, patterns to be followed that showed how things worked. I learned the basic skills, did the maths, and was spurred on to make new things. Of course, there were often errors, poor results, and at times the need to try, try, try again. What can I say? I was preoccupied. I'd forgotten about you. You, who are a big part of me, on the spindle side, waiting there, smelling of sheep. Okay, and so the final one is a bit about the, it's called close knit, which is obviously, it could be the knitting, but it's also about communities. And this is really about the sheep and the people, who are actually very similar, they're very <laughs> character. <laughs> okay, uh, close knit. Sheep on Shetland know how to fend for themselves. It is said that they can last a winter by eating seaweed, foraging on cliffs, and sheltering behind walls. Or if trapped in a snowdrift for many days, may even eat each other's fleece to survive. They say that the fineness of Shetland wool is down to a sparseness of diet. My granny's siblings lived by in a cottage with no running water and no electricity. They had a pony, a cow, hens, geese, peat, and of course sheep. There was a boat but no tractor. Food was hard labour in an unforgiving climate. But still, they grew flowers, made music, told stories, and knitted their souls into warm clothes. Oh, so. <laughs>